Hi everybody, my name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, bringing you Everyday Office video number nine. This is one is about using the building blocks organizer for your headers and your footers. So as you can see at the top of my document up here, I have created a header up here. You can see that it says marketing document, it says who the author is, it says it's page one of seven, and you can also see that down at the bottom, I added a graphic to the footer so that, uh, you know, it was branded or whatever. So the idea here is that once you get the headers and footers set up the way that you want them to be, it's a good idea to templatize that. Now, a lot of times that means save this file as a template, but if I want to be able to add the same sort of header and footer on different types of documents, then it's a good idea to save this into what's called the building blocks organizer. So we start off by double clicking into the header of this document. And then I'll just use control A on my keyboard. As you can see, control A selects the entirety of the header. It doesn't select the header on page two and it doesn't select the footer down here. It doesn't select any part of the document, it just selects what's in the header. And I'll go to the header drop down menu and notice at the very bottom of the header drop down menu, there's this thing that says I can save whatever I have selected into my header gallery. Now I've been saying building blocks organizer and here it says header gallery. Here's the thing in Microsoft Word, basically any component that you want to add, whether it's uh, some standard text or a standard header or a standard footer, those are all saved into your building blocks organizer. And then different segments of it are called auto text or header gallery or footer gallery, those sorts of things. So I'll save this selection to my header gallery. And as you can see here, I can give this thing a name. I'll just call this one standard document header. Notice here that I can save it into the header gallery, but notice all the other options that are here. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, the category here, the built-in category versus the general category versus the new category. Maybe I'll create a new category here called everyday office. So all the everyday office headers go into the everyday office category. I can give it a description if I feel like. Uh, maybe this will be document name, author, author. Uh, page number and number of pages. And right there, save it into building blocks. I could also save it in the normal, which is the template for all my documents, but then it wouldn't necessarily be open, available for us for things that don't use the normal template. So I'll click OK here. And now that thing is saved. Before we move forward and use it, let's just do the same thing with the graphic down here at the bottom. Double click on my footer, control A selects the entirety of the footer, go to my footer drop down menu and save the selection to the footer gallery. I'll call this one standard EO footer into the gallery called footers and into the category called everyday office. Hit OK. And my description will be uh, EO graphic footer. Lovely. Click OK. And now that's saved. And so all that's left here is to make a new document. I'll just use control N on my keyboard. Here's my new blank document. I'll add a little content to it. OK, so at this point, I double click into my header. And I could rebuild stuff. I could go to my header drop down menu and use some of the ones that Microsoft gives me. But down here at the very bottom, I see there's a category called Everyday Office, and there's my standard document header. Now, notice what it says here it says Document 3, Neil Malik, one of three. As opposed to the previous document where it said Marketing Document, Neil Malik, one of seven. Of course, that's because this file is actually the marketing document file. There are seven pages as opposed to three pages, but it's the same author, that same Neil Malik author that's there. Bring up that new document here again. So the second that I go to file, save as, and maybe I'll save this to my desktop, right? Call it uh, test document. 
And uh, just a second here, if I right click on document three and update the field, there it is, test document. So anytime that you change the name of the document, you'll just need to right click on that field and update the field. And now the second part down here at the bottom, double click into the footer, go to my footer drop down menu and choose, oops, the very bottom one, everyday office, standard EO footer right there, click on it. There it is. Now, what happens when I realize these footers are a terrible idea? Gee, that couldn't possibly happen, right? Well, you'll need to get back to the building blocks organizer, and you can get there by a lot of different directions. Uh, but probably the fastest way is if you go to the insert tab up here at the top of the screen, uh, then under your quick parts, there's the building blocks organizer there. Uh, but you know, however you can find a button for the building blocks organizer, uh, there's a bunch of different places you can access it from. So I click on building blocks organizer. And as you can see, this little dialogue that comes up, it's got auto text, it's got bibliographies, cover pages, equations, and there, here's my footers. And notice here are the footers that are built in, built in. Oh, there is a footer that's listed as everyday office. And so if I felt like this was a terrible idea, I just hit the delete button right down here. And in the same way, once I get past footers, here's my headers. Here is a, an everyday office header, and you can see the contents there. Maybe I like my footer, but I don't like my header. I'll click on the header, choose delete, and yes. And now that, that header is no longer available. And click close. So within Microsoft Word, an easy way to add templated content is through the Building Blocks Organizer. That can come in the form of headers, footers, and as you can see here, auto text, bibliographies, tables of contents. There's a lot of different versions of this depending on what area you're most interested in.